Aaron Lopez. Oh, I don't know. You can ask anyone back there too. See that sister in the back? You can ask her. You can ask any. You can definitely ask her. Yes, talk. She's the first one to ask. Yes, bro. No, I haven't. I heard of Aaron Lopez. Uh, I know, but uh, I, I can't remember most of uh, most of those uh, stories. But uh, the slave trail. No. Oh. Uh, so what I'm inferring is that the yeah we we do have an idea as to um, the relations or the relationship that Jewish people have or are connected to. Um, the transatlantic slave trade. But as far as we know, they were facilitators. Also. Um, they, they benefited greatly monetarily or financially. Below is a listing of the Jewish slave ships and the Jewish owners of them. It says Jewish slave ship owners. Now I'm going to I'm going to name the ship. I'm going to name the owners. And I'm going to tell you what nationality or ethnicity they are. Uh, number one, the first ship known as the, and I heard this about this particular ship um, in studying uh, this history of the uh, African or black slave, or should be called the Israelite slave trade, because it was not Africans that were brought over here to serve slavery in America. It was... Uh, the Israelites fulfilling prophecy. The first ship is called the Abigail. Owners Aaron Lopez, Moses Levy, Jacob Franks. Nationality Jews or so called Jews. The second is the Crown. Owners Isaac Levy and Nathan Simpson. Ethnicity or na nationality, Jews. The Nassau, Moses Levy. Nationality, a Jew, a so-called Jew. The Four Sisters, also owned by Moses Levy, a Jew. Anne and Aliza owned by Justice Bush and John Abrams, nationality, so-called Jews. The Prudent Betty, owners, Henry Kruger and Jacob Phoenix, nationality, so-called Jews. The Hester, owners, Mordecai, and David Gomez, so-called Jews. Now some of these names, like uh, the first name, Aaron Lopez, and then you come down to Gomez, those are Spanish sounding names because you had a group of Jews which are known today as the Sof Sephardic Jews. Now, while the secret relationship between blacks and Jews described Lopez as Newport's leading participant in the Black Holocaust. Historian uh, Eli Faber, most likely a so-called white man, determined Lopez underwrote 21 slave ships during a period in which Newport sent a total of 347 slave ships to Africa. All right. The next uh, ship is named the Elizabeth, owned by Mordecai the same owners as the, uh, uh, the Hester, uh, Mordecai and David Gomez, so-called Jews. The Antigua, owned by Nathan Martson and Abram Leon, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, so-called Jews. Uh, the Betsy, owned by D. Wolf, a so-called Jew. 
the poly is P O L L Y is either pronounced poly or poly. I would say poly owned by James D. Wolf. The White House. The White House? In our side? Or in, in, in America here? In America. No, I don't know about that. Oh, no. That's new, that's new information to me. The Expedition, owned by John and Jacob Roosevelt, so-called Jew, or so-called Jews. The Shalo, the Shalowat, the Shalowat, if I'm say, uh, pronouncing it correctly, it's spelled S-C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-E. I guess that's the Shalowat or the Charlotte, owned by Moses and Sam Levy and Jacob Franks. Slave ship? What, like movies based on Yes, I do. Um, we have, what's that, the, the, the Maria Pinta, if I'm not mistaken. Um, um, what's that? Jesus was also the name of the slave ship. A lot of people do not know that. And there are others also. But those those two definitely come to, um, to, to, to mind more, like, um, accessible. So that's quite interesting that a slave ship would be named Jesus. Jesus. There's tons of uh, documentation on the so-called Jews having a major part in the slave trade. The following passages are from Dr. Raphael's book, Jews and Judaism in the United States, a, doc a documentary history. In parentheses, New York, uh, Berman House, Inc., uh, publishing 1983. And this is what it says. It says, Jews also took an active part in the Dutch colonial slave trade. Indeed, the bylaws of the uh, Recife and Mauricia congregations in uh, 1648. So, you know, when, when slavery became this major uh, endeavor, something to invest in, uh, the so-called Jews hopped right on it. Because we're reading the time period of 1648, included an imposter tax or Jewish tax of five soldos for each Negro slave a Brazilian Jew purchased from the West Indies Company Slave auctions were postponed if they fell on a Jewish holiday. In Carousel, in the 16th century, as well as in the British colonies of Bar Barbados and Jamaica in the 18th century, Jewish merchants played a major role in the slave trade. In fact, in all the American colonies, whether French, British, or Dutch, Dutch, Jewish merchants frequently dominated. This, this was no less true on the North American mainland, where during the 18th century, Jews participated in the triangular trade that brought slaves from Africa to the West Indies, and they exchanged them for molasses which in turn was taken to New England and con converted into rum for sale in Africa. Because, uh, and I'm gonna read a scripture on that, because what they did was they traded the uh, bulk of the slaves for, um, for mustard guns, uh, wine, rum, harlots, beads, glass, and other things. It says, which in, which in turn was taken to New England and converted into rum for sale in Africa. Isaac de Costa of Charleston in the 1750s, uh, David Frank, Franks 
of Philadelphia in the seven in the seventeen sixty in the seventeen fifties in the seventeen sixties, and Aaron Lopez, and we read about Aaron Lopez uh, pertaining to that ship that he owned, along with some other so-called Jews called the Abigail, and Aaron Lopez of Newport in the late 1760s and early 1770s dominated Jewish slave trading on the American continent. Uh, the first scripture is Isaiah 22:18. The second is Deuteronomy 28:68, And the third and last is Joel, the third chapter from the, from the second verse to the third verse. I'm sorry, there's one more Revelation 11 verses 8 to 10. Isaiah 22:18. He will he the most high will surely will surely violently turn and toss thee, talking about the curses that Israel is going to receive, like a ball into a large country. Um, that ball that's going to be tossed back and forth is talking about the ships that you're going to be brought in, uh, used to be brought to America, into a large country. That large country is talking about America which biblically, spiritually, is Babylon the Great. Also, spiritually, Egypt, Sodom and Egypt. It says, There shall thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. It's not talking about ancient Egypt. It's talking about the, the new Egypt which is mentioned in Revelation the 11th chapter, that this is, this is spiritually called Egypt. It says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Buy you meaning redeem you, buy you back, because the only one that's going to buy us back is the Lord. He's going to redeem us. Joel, the third chapter, the second and the third verse. I will also gather all nations that will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's why you have all these uh, skirmishes uh, and these little wars, these mini wars happening um, in the Middle East. Because the Most High is causing all these major nations to be brought together for the war of Armageddon spoken of in Revelation. It says, uh, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people. The Lord's people are Israel. The Lord is not coming for any other nation but the nation of Israel. And for my heritage Israel, whom they, have, whom they the nations, have scattered among the nations and part in my land. The third verse. And they have cast lots for my people. This was during the slave trade. And have given a boy for an harlot. And sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Revelation 11 verses 18 to 10. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is America which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt. Why is it called, spiritually called Sodom? Because what major law have they passed, led by uh, Barack Hussein Obama? Uh, the fact that uh, men can marry men and women can marry women. And Egypt, this is the last Egypt. That's why this is known as spiritual Egypt. And this is the longest uh, time period of slavery since ancient Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. In other words, they took the, the, the so-called black Lord away from us and gave us a white Lord. That's why you have a lot of Israelite groups saying Christ. When they say Christ, they're really pushing the white, the Edomite, the, the, the uh, Chesare Bogia. Yeah. That's why they can't frame it in, the, in their mouth to say Yahweh Shai. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not, not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves because we're not physically dead. We're mentally dead. We're spiritually dead. 
and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. And those gifts, we were the gifts in the form of slavery. Because these two prophets, the, the, the nation of Israel split up into two uh, kingdoms. So they referred to us as two prophets. Tormented them that dwell on the earth. Because when we were in our power seat, we put hell on you nations. So now you, you're getting back at us for what we did um, when we enslaved you, namely the Edomites. Slave ships. The slave ships where they actually like they kidnap people and they yeah, slave yeah, them yeah. and they send them like yeah, that. Yeah, do you know? Can you list any conditions? You know, or that's gonna be horrible, obviously. Mm -hmm. Definitely horrible. To be dishonored, we prefer to die. But it is not economical for the slavers. So therefore, we force. You know, and some of the some of the things that were done were definitely. Um, knocking the teeth out, place the funnel, the funnels in, in order to, to 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 force feed, so that we could survive the trip, in order to have an economical reward at the end of that that particular journey. Uh, found in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 68th verse. Now, this is one of the main scriptures that we use to prove that we're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of because that is prophecy, the prophecy of the cargo slave ships. Uh, when you read um, Deuteronomy 28 and 68, it says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And as we have taught that this Egypt is talking about America, because America is spiritually known as Egypt. They carry the symbols of Egypt, and the word Egypt means bondage. And that's found in the book of Exodus 20 and 2. Now, I'll read it again. It says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way where I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Now, what I want to examine is that part where it says we would be brought into America again with ships. That's those cargo slave ships. Now, there's an icon of, uh, of the ships and you see the, the slaves all packed together. Now do you know that there's some history behind that? There's a story behind that. Now I have some information here. This website is entitled uh, from Tripod, the slave ships or the slave trade actually, conditions on slave ships. Now that's something we don't talk about too much. The conditions of what it was that our forefathers endured on those slave ships. All right, so this is entitled, How the Slaves Were Packed. There are two ways for the captains to load their boats with slaves. Now keep in mind, the whole idea behind the slave trade was to make money. It was a money-making venture. Yes, it was prophecy, but the other part is it was a money-making venture. For who? In particular, the so-called Jews. Just like you saw in the segment where Elder Tahar went and he revealed unto you about the so-called Jews having a major hand in slavery. All right? So it says, there are two ways for the captains to load their boats with slaves. One system is called loose packing to deliver slaves. Under that system, captains transported fewer slaves than their ships could carry in order to reduce the disease and deaths among them. All right, so that was running rampant on the slave ship, disease and, and, uh, and uh, uh, deaths, all right? The other system is the cruelest one and is called tight packing. Tight packing? I've never heard of it. Okay. I've heard of tight packing. And I also also know that the same ships were definitely tight, tightly packed, and they were um, forced to defecate, use the bathroom, and everything, 
you know, right then and there because they weren't able to move, they were packed so tightly. Ah, uh, yeah, I know they pack them in the art and I think they put chains on them. That icon that you, you see of all the slaves being packed together, that came from a system called tight packing. And you, devils are going to pay, man. And you better believe that these, these, these devils, they all discussed this. This was all discussed. Logistics, you have something called logistics. How are we going to get the slaves from point A to point B? All right? And another thing that I found when I was doing research, those slave ships were not built for comfort. This is, we're not talking about the princess, which they filmed the Love Boat show on called The Princess. We're not talking about that, all right? We're talking about dirty, filthy slave ships, all right? It says, the system was based on the fact that, now listen to this, tight packing. This system, I'm sorry, this system was based on the fact that the more slaves they had, the more profit they could make, all right? They carried as many slaves as their ship could carry, and often more. And when you hear the system tight packing, what do you, 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 you have to think in pictures. We're talking about men and women that were just all balled up on each other. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. The women, I read certain documents where the women were separate from the men. So let's look at the men. They were all balled over on each other. All right, and a lot of times uh, fights broke out on the slave ship because certain men, they wanted a little space for comfort and they couldn't get that space. So what you had was a lot of animosity, a lot of, it was just a horrible scene, all right? Reading on, it says, in the ship's hull, the slaves were chained ankle to wrist. And that was a three month journey, all right? It was a three month journey from the coast, the west coast of Africa, where they were put on those, those ships to the Americas. Um, I remember that. Um, if I remember correctly, I think it was about a, about a year. Is that home? Are you going to get home? Africa to America. No, it's for the old ship, I don't know. No, no, I don't know. From Africa to America? I would say days. Days? No, on a boat? No, shit. Sure. Yeah. That's fine. Take days. I would make the assumption that it would be about a few weeks. Some, some people have said months. Do you know how long it took for a slip? Do you know how long it took for a station from Africa to America? I think three to four months. And they were chained, the, every day they were chained to what? They were chained to uh, ankle and wrist with barely any place to move. All right, now that's from the document conditions on the slave ship. Now before I go, I have to read this. It says, suicide attempts occurred daily and in painful, cruel ways. Right, because you have to figure these slaves on the ship, day before they were with their families, they were, they were happy. You know, they were enjoying life. The next day, they found themselves on a slave ship, not knowing why and not knowing where they were going. All right? It says, suicide attempts occurred daily and in painful, cruel ways. So to escape, they would commit suicide. Slaves tried jumping overboard and even ask others to strangle them. So they would ask, slaves would ask other slaves, just strangle me. I don't want to go through this shit or they would jump overboard on the ship, either drown or a shark would, would, would get them because the sharks were constantly following the ships, all right? One of the most common ways to avoid further punishment on the journey was to avoid eating. So you had certain slaves that would just stop eating. Starvation suicide attempts became so common that a device was introduced to forcefully open the mouth of the slaves who refused to eat. Now all of this is taking place on that slave ship, right? Slaves believe that their death would return them to their homeland and to their friends and relatives. To prevent slaves from killing themselves, 
sailors began, now listen to this, to prevent slaves from killing themselves, sailors began chopping the heads off of the co corpses, implying that when they died, they would return to their homes headless. So in other words, they would cut their heads off, say, oh, you want to commit suicide? You want to return to your, 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 your friends and your family? Well, guess what? We're going to chop your head off. When you go back to your friends and your family, you're going to go back without no head. You're going to go back headless. All of this drama was taking place on those cargo slave ships. So now, whenever you look at that icon of the cargo slave ship, now you're going to think about all this information. All right? And this is all designed to bring that back to your remembrance, to stir up your anger. Because you so-called Negroes refuse to believe that the so-called white man is the devil, man. And you don't know this history. All right? Read on, it says, implying that, implying, let me read this again, implying that when they died, they would return to their homes headless, even with precautions taken to avoid suicide attempts like drowning and starvation, many healthy and well-fed slaves died from what was known as fixed melancholy. All right? <laughs> so let me go back before I end. Let me go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. All right? So now when you, when you hear the scripture, you got to think of all the drama that was taking place on those ships. All right? By the way where I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there shall ye be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And it's talking about America. And when the scripture says no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall redeem you. That is why the only one that can redeem us is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. I don't remember, I think something like 16. I don't, can't remember much because. Yeah. I'm going to say, I am, because we've got Arabs too, brother. I know that this isn't about Arabs, but we've got Arabs too. Arabs were doing this to us and are still doing it in places like Sudan, Chad, Darfur, right now, currently, as we're doing this right now. I'm not trying to um, divert from what it is that we're talking about. If we're talking about enslavement, to us or to me, it doesn't matter who. Exactly, right. So we're talking about, and again, we're talking about, primarily we spoke about um, Christopher Columbus and, and, and the Jewish um, involvement in slavery. So you're talking about, before it was documented, it was, it was transpiring, it was taking place. So I'm... Uh, I'm going to say that I am not particularly sure about that. Um, however, like the 1600s, 1700s, that sounds, that sounds, I don't want to say accurate, but a lot of historical dates can be found within that particular eon or era. You know, but I'm almost certain that it was taking place way before. You know, we're, we're taught in uh, the public food system that slavery started in 1620, so-called African slavery, which is really Israelite slavery, uh, was, was started in this country in 1620, well, which, is, which is really, it's a lie, but that was like the bulk of the slaves that were brought to this side of the world. There's uh, certain documents that are coming out now that, um, that show, uh, or records in documents that show that... Um, the uh, so-called Negroes, you know, the, the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, were brought into slavery to this side of the world even during the late uh, 1400s when the uh, conquistadors came over to this side of the world. Uh, I have a, um, a website here. I want to read a couple of... This is basically estimates of the slaves that were brought over to this side of the world. It gives you dates. It gives you uh, how many. It gives you uh, the uh, locations where they were brought to, where they were brought from, and where they were brought to. This is uh, from 1501 to 1525. Uh, in Spain, from, from, from Spain, 
which is where the slave trade started from. In Spain, from Spain to Uruguay in South America, there were 6,363 slaves brought. And from Portugal to Brazil, there were 7,000 slaves brought. And for that period of about 24 years, beginning with 1501, there was a total of approximately 13,363 slaves, so-called African slaves, which are Israelites, brought over to this side of the world. So it's letting you know that the slave trade was going on way before that 1620 period. But the 16, 1620 is a, is a key date because that's when a big bulk of the slaves were being brought over here. Because what was happening was the Spaniards on this side of the world were overworking the uh, indigenous people of this land, which are also Israelites, and they were dying off by the tons. And what was happening was the sugar and their different uh, tobaccos and everything that they were planting, you know, the crops needed to go on. The crops needed to be picked so they could make that money. So that's why they were working as slaves so hard and the slaves were dying. So they had to bring other slaves over here to uh, take over. Uh, and from 1526 to 1550, uh, from Spain to Uruguay, 25,375, and from Portugal to Brazil, 25,387, for a grand total of that partic those particular years of 50,763 slaves brought over here. I'll uh, read a few more. Uh, 1576, uh, 1551 to 1575, uh, it says... Um, to, uh, from Spain to Uruguay, 28,167. From Portugal to Brazil, 31,089. And from Great Britain, 1,685. Now, what you're going to find out is that, that um, the Caribbean islands begin, especially uh, Havana, you know, Cuba, Santo Domingo, and uh, Haiti, were big uh, slave ports. And what was happening was they were bringing the ships from so-called Africa to this side of the world, and they were bar they were embarking down in um in in the Caribbean islands to clean the slaves up and to ship them out up to North America and South America or wherever it was that those sh uh, slaves were needed. So I have another site here that goes into these ports, and uh, there's a place called Isabella. Right? It says the proximity of gold and numbers of indigenous Tainos led the Spanish to settle in what they named Isabella on the north coast of Hispaniola, which Hispaniola was what they called uh, Dominican Republic in Haiti. It says in 1493, over the next five years, the local population was worked to death, building the town and looking for gold in the nearby river. The Spanish already had slaves largely from North Africa, who they brought with them to Santo Domingo. Many managed to escape to the mountains, and the settlements was abandoned in 1498. So basically, they from Spain, as we read in the other document, they were already bringing Jake slaves, uh, uh, or the uh, southern tribe slaves, over to this side of the world. To, for the purpose of what? Of working those plantations that they had set up. Why? Because the indigenous people were dying off. So they needed, they needed this. You know, and these are all parts, parts of, the, of prophecy, parts of the curses that came upon our people that they would suffer for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Now, read on. It says, the city of Santo Domingo. After they abandoned Isabella, the colonists established a new city at Santo Domingo in 1496, which they inaccurately named as the first city of the Americas. It became the seat of the colonial government for the Americas and the early site of the royal treasury. Its governor, Nicolas de Avando, ordered the first importation of Spanish-speaking slaves of African descent, Ladinos, into the Americas in 1501. I didn't know I started in Spain. I didn't know it was the Americas. <laughs> yeah, I hear something like that, but I don't know read that, but, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the Negroes worked a lot better than the Indians did. They used to be quicker to um, catch the seas and they die quicker. They were more durable. They were used to the heat and working long hours and stuff like that. In the 1500s? Yeah. Where are you to? We are not yeah. better. <laughs> Normally, I, 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 I don't know. have uh, this thing about those things because it's, it's been a long time, so yeah. I just don't, don't want to 
put my mind off those, on those things, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if you knew that, but I mean, I don't did know. I know that? Yes, I did, because uh, um, I myself, I was born in the Caribbean, which is called wrongfully the West Indies, because we are not Indians, we are dark skinned people, and common practice of the indigenous people dying off, and then that that labor force having to be replenished. So a lot of it was going on with the with us as the replacement for that labor force. So it didn't just happen here in North America, in South America, or Central America. It happened during the the, the what is that called? The triangular um, yes, yes. So 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 whatever happened here was basically a variation of what was transpiring everywhere they touched. They meaning enslavers or people who thought themselves as white. Well, then you know that this, this, the, the uh, slave uh, trade of uh, the so-called Negroes in this country, which are the Israelites, Judah, uh, Benjamin, and Levi of the nation of Israel, started way before 1620. There was a lot of, there's a lot of information, a lot of, of things that are being, that are hidden, that, that, that you're not being told of in history, you know, and the way that they control you is through your, um, is through the uh, American fool system because that's where they indoctrinate you and they teach you history that they want you to know. Like uh, there's a, a famous quote by Voltaire, a, a philosopher, I believe he was a French philosopher, he said history is a lie commonly agreed upon. And that's what they do. They just take different parts of history, slap them together and feed it to you, spoon feed it to you in, in, uh, in uh, these different schools. Now I have a couple of scriptures here to uh, back up you know, the slave trade. This is uh, Nahum chapter 3, verse 4. This is the Lord speaking to you so-called white people, you know, you Edomites. You know, what you in the scriptures you're known as Babylon the Great, you're known as the Assyrians, you know, uh, uh, the Basra. You know, you're known by different names, you know, uh, Egypt. All right, it says Nahum 3 and 4. Because of the multitude of the whoredom of the well-favored harlot, harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, because America is a mistress of witchcraft, that selleth nations through her whoredoms, and families through her witchcrafts. And that's how you were able to do that. Because them so-called Jews, which supplied the ships through the British East India Company and the Dutch East India Company, they were the ones that, that allowed the rest of you other Edomites to ship the uh, so-called Negroes, which are which were the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, over to this side of the world. And, and that's where the slave trade began. Why? Because this was all to fulfill prophecy. Now keep in mind, they were... They were um, there were uh, revolts that took place even on the islands. Jake revolted against Esau. They started fighting against Esau. And, and these, these uh, conquistadors, these Spaniards, they would get nervous because more and more slaves were revolting. And there's been a whole lot of revolts all throughout history, you know, of Jake trying to get away from you devils. But it, it, it can't happen. Why? Because the Lord put that curse on Jake and Jake can't escape that curse until it's fully fulfilled. Now, this is the book of... Um, this is an account in um, in our uh, uh, third Maccabees in uh, the uh, th uh, I'm sorry first Maccabees three and uh, forty one it says and the merchants of the country hearing the fame of them took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves letting you know that this is nothing new. The children of Israel was in, were in slavery under the Egyptians and all, all other nations on the planet Earth. This just happened to be the last captivity under the so-called white men, which are the Edomites. And this is the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter and the 11th verse, because ultimately we, what, what's going to happen is this country is going to be destroyed. You know, and this is, this is what's going to happen after the destruction, because you're still going to have people, remnants of people around the world that are going to see the destruction. And especially businessmen that had uh, a, a large uh, monies invested into this uh, into this country by way of their of their merchandise. Uh, Revelation eighteen eleven. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen 
and purple and silk and scarlet and, th and all the ironwood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Because in this country, they still sell slaves, and they've been selling slaves from the beginning of, of, of the uh, colonization of the so-called white men, which are the Edomites that came over to this side of the world. 